G'day, my name's Darrell Webb, and today we're going to have a look at a budget, a very good budget-wise ultralight hiking chair. Uh, we'll talk about its pros and cons, what it's actually really made for, and we'll talk about its construction, and um, who it's for. Anyway, let's get into it. We'll start off with its construction, I guess. So the bag that came with it and the chair material itself is a 600 denier. Um, the advertised listing says 600 denier Oxford cloth. Sounds about right. Um, I weighed this and with my luggage scales it says 850 grams. The actual weight on the site says 950 grams. So take that with a bit of grain of salt, whichever one's right. Um, aluminium poles. Seem to be quite good, stand up quite well. And the hubs themselves are a high, I don't know, a high pressure molded plastic or something. They're very strong when you're actually using the chair. There's no real flex through these. So these, when you look at how these are made, these would actually seem these would be probably the weak part, but actually using it now, um, it seems like to be the least weak part. The aluminium actually has a fair bit of flex in it, but the, uh, the, the plastic doesn't. Um, it's all connected with bungee shock cord. And the bungee shock cord is quite strong hasn't worn out yet I've been using this one for close to 12 months now I've used it on several good trips and um, it's all holding up well so construction wise I think it's quite good now the actual cloth itself um, it's got a mesh back the mesh seems pretty good quality uh, it's got a bit of give in it a bit of stretch but that's probably what it's meant to do uh, the stitching all looks quite good um, the, the corners where the poles hook into are, are, are reinforced and they seem like quite solid, like they're, they're actually really, I'm not sure what's actually in there, they've got a bit of hard plastic or something in there, as well as the actual material and um, some doubling up. There's some heavy duty sort of vinyl, vinylized type material in the corners there as well. But um, all in all, that's in that same 600 denier Oxford cloth and um, the stitching seems good and more than heavy duty enough. Now, construction of the chair is pretty simple, pretty much sets itself, I can just sort of Guide the little legs back into their spots. Um, really straightforward. It's not the quickest chair to put together. Um, typically, uh, another light alternative is a, is one of those little tripod, you know, three-legged diamond-shaped chairs, um, and they do a good job. The only thing that's sort of wrong with them, for me now, is that they don't have a back. So if you're sort of spending a bit of time in them, something with a back is, is a bit better. You know, so sort of hook it together this is um this will do some of the pros and cons while we do this because we'll start off this is one of the cons when you hook these on there's no loops to pull it a little loop on the end which is making so much easier to to hook on with your fingers not too bad with the first few I typically do the front ones first the shorter ones and then I do to the longer ones. There's a bit of a knack to sort of get it because it's quite firm. The more you use the chair, it sort of stretches in and becomes easier. But um, when you sort of first get it, it's, it's quite hard to do. And my, my kids actually still struggle with it a bit. If they haven't used it for a while, it sort of shrinks back a bit and it's quite, quite hard to put back together. Now some other cons. These little rubber feet come off. You don't sort of find that out until you've lost a couple of them like I've done along the way. And, um, and realistically, that's probably about it for construction-wise cons. I guess you could glue them on. You know, but one of, the, one of the cons is that if you're on some soft ground, which quite often happens, it's got such little feet on it that they can actually stick in. So if they stick in the ground, then um, on sandbars or on muddy turf, your chairs is going to bottom out, so you have to find a bit of bark or a bit of timber or something to put underneath it. I have seen um, some other manufacturers make some like, I guess they look like big super balls with a hole drill on them and they stick the feet on them and they're probably all right. Now let's talk about some of the pros of it. So I already said it's light, it's, um, it's under a kilogram and for that you get something that is actually very comfortable. I've got to say I've spent a few hours in this on a fair few different trips and it hasn't let me down. Um, the mesh back in cool weather, if the back wasn't mesh, maybe it'd be, the chair would be a little bit warmer. 
um, because you know, as you when you sit in a camp chair, it sort of does compress the insulation on your back, so it can feel a little bit cool. But no worse than any other. And obviously in summer, it's um, it's cool, so that could be a pro and a con. Uh, pros of it. That's it. I don't know. It's 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 a good quality little chair. Um, it seems to be done really well and, and at an affordable price. So that's probably one of the big pros for this particular one is when you start looking for some of these chairs um, there's lots of different manufacturers that are pretty much making the exact same chair i'm guessing the original brand is helinox the helinox chair one is in particular the weights are the same it looks exactly the same specifications are all very very much the same um, but there are other manufacturers there's um, one tigress and um, and a lot of actual brands like rei and um, anaconda and things like that are actually making their own branded version of these chairs but a big pro for this particular one is this one is available on ebay i paid 33 dollars for it delivered here in australia um, and they're still on there at that price they've sold lots of them and looks like they've got plenty more to sell so i'll put a listing a link in the description to this actual chair on where i bought it from um, there's a few different colors you can get some couple of different blues and i think a red one as well and um and that's probably about it for its its pros and pros and cons it's 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 not the most expensive model of it and if you can get around having things that aren't branded and, and get it for a good price then this is probably the one to get now if you really feel like maybe you want to get the the genuine article there is as i said the brand helinox um now they make pretty much the exact same chair as this same weight and, and whatnot maybe some different color options and i think they're 149 and they actually make also which is, is very interesting if you want to spend the money for even less weight they make one that's called the helinox chair zero which is a slightly slightly smaller a tiny bit lower that's about the, the only difference and it's only 550 grams so it's really light but it's 170 dollars i think 170 or 180 dollars anyway i'll put links to both those too so if you do feel a bit like actually buying the genuine brand or what i think is the, the the genuine brand it may not be maybe it's a copy of something else as well but they're the most expensive ones so i'm guessing they're the genuine one so <laughs> who's this chair sort of made for well it's obviously made for for people who are weight conscious um obviously if you're if you are hiking and and um it's suitable for that it's also suitable for people who would for its compact size it doesn't take up much more room than a one litre bottle of water so um you know anything from camping out of a boat or out of a kayak or um or even just if you got a fair few people in a, in a standard four-wheel drive and you're, you're filling the back of the car with big full-size camp chairs um you know five full-size camp chairs fills up the back of my pajero five of these doesn't make much difference at all you know so not just lightweight also compact the pack up pack up's very simple Quicker to pack up than it is to set up. Holes all just pop out. Hold them back and half. And um, roll it up in that. Obviously, if you're super weight conscious, you probably don't even need the bag, but you know. It really fits nice and easy and works well. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like fishing and camping and hiking and gear reviews, then uh, maybe hit the subscribe button. Anyway, bye for now.